maximize functions are exactly what they sound like. They are pieces of functions that we put together to make one big function. And so they might look something like this. different equations, both of them line, but they're different depending on where I am on the graph. So let's talk, first let's talk about how we find values and how we determine which one to use, and then we'll talk about how we actually graph them. Then we'll do domain and range. If this, what? If this is my function, what would be, if I asked you to find f of negative 2, what would you do? Plug negative 2 into x, but I have two different equations. Which equation would I use? Both of them? The easier one. Will says use the easier one. Do you agree that negative 2 is my x here? You said plug it in for x, so it's x, right? Look at the criteria. This says my equation is 2x plus 3 when x is less than 0. But my equation is x minus 5 when x is bigger than or equal to 0. So plug it into the top one. Why, Finley? That makes it true. That's exactly right. I have to decide which equation it goes into. Good job. So it goes into the first one. I like seeing y'all like this because I can see your eyes and you're not turned to the side. And stuff. I can see everybody except for Will. His eyes are closed. But claims he can't see the board from there. All right. So I'm going to use the very first equation. 2 times negative 2, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. That's exactly right. What if I asked you to find f of 2? Then I plug it into the bottom one, and I get 2 minus 5, because 2 is, of course, bigger than 0. Right? Anybody confused about where these are coming from? Okay, so I'm looking at this x, and I'm deciding. Okay, pick six. Yeah. I'm just doing examples. We're using this equation and we're deciding what would f of negative two be? What would f of two be? What would f of six be? No. But wait, let's do this all the, for this particular one, yes. Hold on, and we'll do that one. That's a good one. Hold on just a second. So f of 6, which equation am I in? Bottom equation, because 6 is bigger than 0, so I got 6 minus 5 equals 1. Grayson, what would you say? 2 over 3? 2 over 3, which equation am I in, top or bottom? Is 2 thirds smaller... Smaller than zero or bigger than zero? Bigger than zero. So I'm in the bottom equation. So it would be two thirds minus five, which would be negative 13 over three. Because it's going to be 15 over three. No, no, only the x, so I can determine which equation to use. What about f of 0? I hear both of them. I hear bottom one. Why is it the bottom one? Look at this little line under here. That tells me I have to use that equation, so 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 
Let me give you another function. I'm going to make it a little bit harder. That's just how you answer it. Yeah. Well, we haven't graphed it yet. We're evaluating. Yeah. It just does that on my phone. Will, just for today, you can sit on the floor right here in the middle with your notebook. Just while we do notes for today. Can you see now? I didn't show you my career. All right. Yes, you do. Okay. Where are your beans, I know that's your favorite thing to come in on a Monday morning and see. Yeah. You can accept or deny it, so I count that as a yes. If I asked you to find f of 2 based on this function, what? If 2 is greater than 0. Because 2 is greater than 0, so 3 times 2. No, the number, the number. F of 0, which one am I using? The middle number, because it has the equal sign at the bottom of it. Say again. Okay, so for this one, because it equals, this is the only one it can be, because it equals there, so it'd be the middle. So it would be just zero, right. So look at where that line is and what it includes, because this says it can get really close to zero, but can't actually be zero. This one says it can actually be zero, right? How about f of negative four? because the top one is smaller than negative one, right? So it would be one half negative four squared, which is 16 and half of 16 is eight. For negative four. This is saying, but you think about your number line. So I've got negative one and zero. So if it's between, if it's smaller than negative one, I'm using one half x squared. If it's between negative one and zero, it's x. And if it's bigger here, I'd use three x plus one. So negative four would fall over here. So I would use that equation. Negative one half, what equation are you using? The middle. Does everybody see how we're picking these? All right, so again, where does negative a half fall? Look on this number line. Between negative one and zero, right? Here's negative a half, so this is the equation I use. It 
exactly right because I'm between negative one and zero, right? They're all going to be negative fractions. But it also includes negative one and zero. So it could also be negative one and it could also be zero. Huh? No, like they give you what's in blue and then they say find this, find this, find this. Did you just rip that off my wall? All right, let's talk about graphing it because that's the big thing. What? Move to Hawaii. Let's look at this. Where did you see her name? That's been a long time ago. All right. No. Let's think about this for just a second, okay? Who? Family would never say such a thing. No way. I don't even believe it. Word for word. All right. What's this? I have to ask you. What does each one look like? What kind of function are they? Well, this is linear. They're linear. They're both linear, right? They're both going to be lines. Now, as a refresher, let me just digress a minute. Ms. McGee, why are they going to be lines? No exponents. Mx plus b. What well, depends on what exponent it is. What would that? You tell me what that would be. You better. You just took a test on it. You made a song for it. Quadratic. This is a line, yes. How do you graph a line in this form? Tell me what the M and the B are. Y is slope. Slope intercept. Y is, or B is the Y intercept. Slope is rise over run. If I'm graphing a line in slope intercept form, it's the easiest form to graph in. I start. I start at the y-intercept and I put my point there and then all I have to do is apply the slope. Remember this? So if I had y equals one-half x minus two. But I have to start where? At negative two. So I start and then I go up one over two. Is it all coming back? It's all coming back. What if it's negative? What if it's negative? Still starting at negative two, but I go down one over two. Never left, always right, it's either up or down. All right. Now, I say all that as a refresher. I want you to think about this for just a minute. Some people like, the, I, I teach you this in two different ways. I teach you what I call an eraser method, and then I teach you in what I call a plug-in method. I much prefer the plug-in method. It's a little less sloppy, and, but I'm, I think the eraser method is easier to understand. So I'm going to first show you the eraser method, and then I'll show you the plug-in method, okay? If you want to. 
Sure. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore these restrictions over here, and I'm just going to graph these two lines, okay, on the same axis. I'm just going to graph them. So the first one, I'll do them in two different colors for you so you can see here. The first one is 2x. So that means I start where? At the origin or zero because the y-intercept is zero. And then I go up two over one. Yes, bless you. I could continue if I needed to. I don't really have to. Does everybody agree with me that that is that line? All right. Now let's graph the other line. Hmm. That's not a good color, is it? Where do I start? Three. Three. What's the slope? One, one. Up one, over one, right? Up one, over one. Agree, disagree. All right. Here's why I call it the eraser method. Now I'm going to look at these restrictions that I have, right? For the green one first, it says that that's the line, but only when x is smaller than 1. Well, here's where x is 1, right? So this is my cutoff for this. So if I want it when x is smaller, do I need to erase the top part or the bottom part of the line? The top part, because this is where x gets bigger. So this says I only want this part of the line. That's when x is smaller than 1. Now, same thought process on my yellow line. I only want it when x is bigger than 1, right? Here's where it's 1. So which part do I erase? The bottom part. Right? Is everybody with me so far? All right. The only other thing I have to take into account is one of these has a line under it and one doesn't. The one with the line under it gets a solid dot. Think about your number lines whenever you were graphing them in whatever grade you do that in. And then the one without a line under it gets an open dot. That's what my piecewise looks like. Because it's two pieces. Does it maintain its functionality? What does it mean to be a function? Let's have an x and a y. One and only one y for every x. It passes that vertical line test. Remember that vertical line test we talked about? It still maintains. Now, if that bubble was darkened there, if this was included, it would not be a function anymore because, right, it would fail the vertical line test at that point. Yeah. This means open because there's no line under it. The line under here means closed because it includes it. The linear ones are the easiest ones to do. Because I don't have to worry about things like a vertex of a parabola or anything of the sort, which you will have to worry about if you have quadratics. Let me show you the plug-in method. Thank you. Because that's the way that I prefer to do it, in my opinion. Same problem, different way. For the plug-in method, here's what I do. I start with the restriction itself, okay? So for the first one, for the first one, I'm going to take that value 1, and I'm going to plug it into the equation. And what do I get when I plug it in? 2. At 1, 2, I need an open dot. 1, 2. How do I know it's open? Holy crap. There's no line under it. That's exactly right. So I know it's open. 
And then from there, all I have to do is treat that just like I treat the y-intercept and apply the slope. What's the slope? One, two, and over one. Yes? Same thing with the other. Start with your restriction, right, and plug it in. What do you get? Four, one, four, and I think I'll do this one a little bit differently to show you. Now what I'm going to do is maybe I couldn't find the slope. Maybe it's a parabola. Maybe it's some other kind of function. So what I'm going to do is pick an x that satisfies this condition. In other words, pick an x that's bigger than one, two. If I plug in two, what do you get? Five. Same kind of concept, I'm still doing the same kind of thing, just, and there it is. Oh, no, wait. We did the first one wrong. Why is the first one wrong? I got to go down instead because it's less than. I was distracted over there at my desk. Less than one would be zero. If I plug in zero, what do you get? Zero. There it is. My bad. It should look the same. My bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry, y'all. We'll do another one. What's the domain of this while we're here, though? Domain range never goes away. Somebody said it. Negative infinity? Infinity. How about the range? Uh, bottoms up. Negative infinity. Look what happens here. If I go from the bottom up, 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 but it stops at two, right? Does it include two or no? No. So it's a parenthesis, and then it picks back up where? Four. Does it include four? No. And then it goes up forever. I think I'm going to keep you just linear today on graphing. Yeah. Do it again. No, don't do it again. Let's do another. Give me a linear equation, Grayson. Any in the whole world? Will, give me a restriction. That will give me a linear equation. Ooh. I'm actually going to make it negative also. <laughs> One more time. All right, graph it. Graph it and state the domain and range. Mark, set, go. I don't know what you're talking about right you, now. If you plug in two, what do you get? I thought you did it like Ten. two times three. Yeah. Wait, why don't you put the four? Why do you put the two? I thought the four was the y intercept. Yeah, are you graphing an eraser method? Sure, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm 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 doing plug in. So I'm plugging right, this just in tell first. Me if I'm wrong or right. Four and ten and negative and, and oh. I plugged in two first. I plugged in the restriction. Four and ten and negative four and a half. And a half. I'm going to make it an open circle. 
So at 210, I'm going to put an open circle. It does, but I'm going to, that's that's my cutoff point. That's where I cut it off. Yeah, I thought it was 410. How'd I do that wrong? I don't know why you keep saying 410. You put the 4 because it's the liner set, and then you put the 10 because it's that. So you don't even use that 4 of Unless you do a racer. If you do a racer method, yes. So I plug it in just to find out where that cutoff point is, but I make it open so that it doesn't include that point. So just like over here, where am I? See, the point's there. It's just open right there. Because even though it can't be one, I put an open circle there to show that it can't be one, but I still need to know where it is. Because it can get really, really close to it. All right, so now an X bigger than two. Three. And what do you get? Right? Or you could have gone, since it's greater than two, you could have gone up three over one, right? 11, 12, 13 over one. All right, so it looks something like this on that piece. Are you on the bottom one? All right. Yeah. When I plug in two here, I get negative four plus a half, which would be negative 3.5, right? So two But it's a solid dot this time. Why is it a solid dot? There's a line under it. Now I need an X that's smaller than two. One. If I plug in one, I get negative 1.5, right? One, negative 1.5, and it goes in this direction. Right. What is my domain here? Uh, left to right. Yep. Yeah. Now the range. Negative three and a half. That's exactly right. Negative three and a half. A bracket or a parenthesis? Bracket, because see, it's it's filled in right here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Infinity. Infinity. I lost a paper clip. I just had it. I was just playing with it. I meant um, the... Oh. It's a staple. Staple. Let's do another one. I can tell you I don't have it yet. I got it. Will, give me a linear equation. Y'all keep picking these one halves. Go that way and put a line under it. Which way? That way? Yeah, put a line under it. Four. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. Give me another equation. Nah, nah, plus seven. All right, X, that way, normal. Oh. Graph it. Mark that guy. Where's the paper clip? I'm going to stick I ate it. 
Okay. Um. Wait. How do I start? What do I say to them? Okay. Well, it's uh, it's four and eight thirds. Is it? For real? I bet. So you um, wait. How do you go to two thirds? I'm at yeah. About two and a half, right there. Is that a circle? Oh, uh, close. That was, that was close. I didn't do that. And then you do. Uh, I don't know how to get it. Just I don't know how to do eight thirds. How do you? How do you? Yeah. How do you do like eight thirds again? Don't you have to, you have to make another line, another dot, right? Let's use three. Let's use two, I think. So then it would be one plus two thirds. Five thirds. So how do you do five thirds? Almost. So. So I would go over four again and up one and a half. Two. Over two and then up one and a half. Okay. About, about one and a half. Wait, that's probably about three and a half. Okay, so then you go like this. And then go like that. Okay, so you go like this. This is what? That? What am I? What? What do you mean? You got the point. Four eight turns. Yeah. Right? And then you got the point two five thirds. Yeah. Okay. Where is two five thirds? That's the question. Some about like right here. Wait, I'm pressing the button. Some about like right there. Why am I why is this squiggly? Alright. Okay, now this one's open. Yeah. Right? So then you go, you go over four, because it's four, and then you, um, uh, uh, then you go up 12. Uh, let's just go up somewhere. That's 12. Oh, wait, it's open. Okay. Big circle. Okay, and then you, um, May I have to go like six? Would that be a good number? Five. Okay. Five. And then you. Four. You go to. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Okay. And then. Wait, would this one be closed or open again? Because just the first one has to be open, right? Yeah. So say that's it. That's uh fifteen or fourteen or fifteen. Okay. Well, negative infinity, infinity, and then um, wait, wait, wait. Which one's left or right? So that's negative infinity, infinity. Okay. Oh, I press the button again. Oh, I just negative. Oh, infinity, infinity. Now this one is um. Um, would it be infinity negative or negative infinity? Why not? 
They're going like that, though. Oh, oh, oh. And then it's, it's two. Or wait, yeah, it's like 2.6. Well, 2.6. Okay, wait. And then. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, and then you write like a U? I don't know. So then, right like, like a normal U. Okay. Uh, twelve. Parentheses because it's open. Twelve infinity. Tell me what you think about these no, I just do the first part. I didn't do the second part. So it depends See? on the way the inequality is. So this one says that it's got to be smaller than 4. Smaller than 4 goes to the left. So this equation is going to start at 4 and go to the left. This one says bigger than 4, so it's going to start at 4 and go to the right. You just have to look at the way it is. Less than or less than left. Yeah, look at the way it's last than right. it's always. Hand over there. Hey, look, guys, I just All did right, the so first you part, should have I? time to get your homework done before you leave. Yeah. Um. There's only eight problems and two of them are closed. So there's only two, four, six graphs. I'll let you work. We'll see how you do. As long as y'all work the whole time, I'm okay with that. Oh, sorry. I told you to pause that.